Hey people, it's time to talk about codes. This is from tutorial 12. It's one of my favorite things in discrete math, so I'm happy to be able to do this with you. Uh, if you've just run across this channel at random, uh, this is not the kind of coding that you do in cryptography. Uh, lis uh, keep listening along and you'll see what I mean. Anyway, let's dive in. I want to talk about questions 1 and 2 on the tutorial 12, which are talking about the dimension and the minimum distance of a code. And we're given, in this case, a code where there are only two words in the code. So the only two valid codes are, code words, I should say, are the string of n zeros and ones. And the question asks, what is the dimension of this code and what is the minimum distance? And I can just tell you the rule, and that leads us quickly to the answer, but it doesn't explain why. Um, so let's do the quick version first. The dimension of the code is the value k such that 2 to the k gives you the number of code words in the code. There are only two code words, so we want 2 to the k to equal 2, so k has to be 1, and that's the dimension. The minimum distance is the number of bits that are different uh, between any two code words. The distance is the distance between two code words. The minimum distance is the minimum. It's irrelevant, the difference in this case, because every bit is different, so with a code of length n, the minimum distance of this code is going to be n. The question, though, is why, and that's why it's convenient to talk about question 2 at the same time, because having just two code words is not very common. If you only have yes or no to send, then that makes sense, and the more zeros or ones you have in your yes or no code words, the more likely it is to be received correctly. But let's let's uh, pretend we had a code where it was six. No, let's just do four. Keep it simple. Four zeros and four ones are the valid code words. There are, let's think of it this way, there are four code words that are pretty obviously, if we, re if we receive these words, sorry, it's a little early, I need more coffee. If we receive these four words, we're pretty sure that what was meant was zero, 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 zero. And if we receive, let's make a little space here, if we receive any of these words, we're pretty sure that what was meant was one, 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 one. And we correct accordingly. But if we get any of these words I'm going to put in the middle, let's change color just to keep them separate, if we get 0011 or 0101 or 1010, there are four choose two, there are six of these, <clears throat> we don't know, we can tell that there's a mistake, it's not a code word, but we don't know whether we should correct it over here or over here. So that's why we say that this this code, um, it has minimum distance 4, and the dimension is still 2, that's, or is 1, sorry, Oof. distance is 4, because that's n, those we know from before. But if we look at how many errors this can correct, we can only, um, we can detect 2 errors, because if there are 2 errors, we get one of these blue in the middle. But how many can we correct? We can only correct one error. So that's the difference between detection and correcting. We can detect usually more than we can correct, because we don't always know how to correct them unless our code uh, allows us to do that, which is, very, uh, which is what we want. So that leads us nicely into question two. Given any word in a code, let's look at the set of words that can be obtained by making not more than two errors in x. So this is like the situation uh, I showed you here. Uh, let's see, can we just use this one? Let's make it a little more generic. We've got, well, let's use 000, zero, zero because it's always in a, in a linear code. The words that can be made by making not more than two errors means we need the words that can be made by making zero, one, or two errors. So zero errors is the word itself. There's one of them. Making one error is all the ones with one bit different. So there are n of those because there are n places where we can have the bit be wrong. 
and then two errors are all the ones with two ones in it, and there are n choose two of those. So that's why it, very often you'll see the analogy of a, a ball or a sphere centered on the code word, a multidimensional sphere. So this is the code word that's in the code. These ones are one error away. These ones are two errors away. They are the only ones that are one and two errors away. And it's kind of like a ball or sphere containing those. That's a pretty terrible picture, but hopefully it's going to help in a moment. So the number of words which can be obtained by making not more than two errors, we're calling that uh, the set of two errors, up to two errors of the code word, the word X. It's one for the code itself, the code word, n for the one error, and n choose two for the two errors. And we're given, we're given the answer, and we have to show that it's true. So we should simplify to show that it's the same thing. So any time we have two, we can say it's n, n minus one over two. So let's see, two plus two n plus n squared minus n. Sorry, this is boring. You could have figured this out on your own. <clears throat> so that's um, the words that can be made by making not two, more than two errors in x. The second part of the question is a little more subtle. And what it's saying is how many how many code words basically are in this? They're, they're saying that A, E is the code, and we want to find a maximum on E. So how many code words could we have in this scenario? Well, uh, we're told that it's length eight, so we know that there are eight uh, zeros in my code. We can, let's, let's just assume for a moment that eight ones is in my code as well. And we have the n squared plus n plus 2 over 2 code words in this uh, sphere as well, which are all the ones with one error hmm. and all the ones with two errors. So there's these ones and then there's these ones. That's really messy. But anyway, there's another sphere with that many code words in it. And for each other valid code word, whatever it is, we have this sphere with n squared plus n over plus 2 over 2 other words in it. So I'm not being particularly careful with my terminology, but remember code words are the ones that are valid words that you can assume were received correctly, but a, just a general word is just any string of bits of the right value. And you have to decide if the word you received is a code word or whether it gets corrected to one of your code words. So any word that's received, you figure out which one of these spheres it's in, and that tells you which code word you're going to correct it to. So if we can correct two errors, we know that these spheres are all disjoint. We can't have any overlap between them because if there was overlap, that would mean that any, co any word we received that was in here or here, we wouldn't know where to correct it to. So we can't have that scenario. We've got all these spheres around valid code words and each of them has exactly n squared plus n plus 2 over 2 words in it. And then there may be other um, words that are kind of, we won't worry about them. We've got how many possible words? 2 to the 8, because we had 8 bits, which can be either 0 or 1. These are always binary codes at your level. We have 2 to the 8, which is 256 possible words. And we know that each of these spheres has, well, we haven't actually figured it out, n squared plus n plus 2 over 2, when uh, 8, that's 64, blah, 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 that's 37, I hope, something like that. So we know that each of these spheres has 37 words in it with a maximum of 256, so the number of spheres can't be, it's 6 and something. I'm just going to write it here. Because whatever this number is, 256 divided by 357, it's about equal to 6.8 or something like that. <laughs> what am I doing? There. 
So we have a maximum number of these spheres of six and a bit, so it's six because it has to be an integer, and each of these has at its center a code word, so that means we have at most six code words, and the size of E, the number of code words, is less than or equal to six. So I hope that helps with question one and two, and then I'll do question three separately, even though it's related, because we have to construct the code, and that's going to take a minute. Talk to you soon.